making money online has become easier and easier. And I think that's it's a great opportunity to to at least like try it out, like do something. Oh, I want to be a coach or, oh, I want to make social media content or like, you know, those things that kind of, when your friends do it, you're like, mm, yeah, yeah, are you sure you're going to like succeed with that? You know, that's the first thing. And, and then they first make fun of you and then yeah, they yeah. get angry at you, like the whole kind of process, right? And then they eventually will ask you, bro, what did you do? Yeah, if it works, if it, if it works out for you, they're going to ask you, like, I want to do the yeah. same, but they never want to go through that phase of shame and like, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the YouTube Business Academy podcast with your hosts, Ron and George. In this episode, we talk about how to make money online and specifically through YouTube. So if you have a job and it's okay, but you would like to reclaim your freedom, go traveling and really live life on your own terms, then you've come to the right place. Stick around because it's going to be a good one. Let's start off by asking my dear friend and host, Ron, how is he doing in the cold and windy Netherlands? Ron, how are you yeah. doing? It's a big difference. Last week, we were sitting in the sun outside. I got surprised by a confetti uh, cannon. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cold and uh, dark, as you can see also here. It's uh, yeah, like f it's 5 p.m. now, and it's completely mm -hmm. pitch black. But you know how it is in Finland. But uh, overall, I'm also happy to be back at home, back yeah. in the routine. The train yeah. is going. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, uh, how does it feel to be back home? Because I've been Good. away for a while. Yeah, you've been away for two, uh, almost a month now, right? Almost a month, yeah. Yeah, so I was visiting George in Spain for uh, 10 days. It was really nice. We did some great things, uh, filmed some podcasts. Uh, also, like, relax, enjoy life a little bit. Um, but 10 days for me is, like, enough. Uh, I think you have the feeling as well now. You're, you're almost a month <laughs> in. You probably want yeah. to go back as well, right? Or Yeah. Yeah, I get this feeling that I want to go back. But it's not because I'm tired of Spain. It's more because I'm tired that I don't have my own place. So, like, yeah. I love my working desk. You know, it's a stand-up desk. I yeah. love my fast internet. I, yeah, the routines and everything. Of course, family and, you know, my girlfriend and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. like, if I if I could just copy-paste that into Spain here for the winter, like, that would be really, really nice. And I wouldn't mind staying here for longer because I really like it. Yeah. Uh, but... Of course, you know, the fact that I have to work from weird places and, and all of this, it's kind, it's kind of like annoying. It, it's good. Like, it's, it's, this, it's this thing of like embracing chaos, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> everything is structured. Yeah, I, but I, I do suggest like if, if you're listening or if you're traveling somewhere for a long time, especially longer than a month, like make sure you have a decent setup because then yeah. you can actually can get like, like do some deep work as well. Like yeah. when I was in Spain, I was sitting at like, like my uh, <laughs> diner table, hunched over, yeah. you know, and the chair is optimal. And the, yeah. Like it's fine for like a while, but for like a week or, but like that's also another reason, of course, why you sh why I, I at least went to Spain. Like I didn't go to Spain to do some deep work because yeah. uh, that's not going to exactly. work. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, overall, like uh, it was very nice. Uh, back to the to the routine. Uh, YouTube is growing, not as crazy as previous months. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I must say, I also haven't uploaded as many videos this month. Like my, my freelance right. right now is like, I, I like I told in a previous podcast, I'm upping the quality. Green screen. Yeah. He will film himself and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I also hired a video editor to edit the video to make it look higher quality. Okay. But all these adjustments also take for take up more, more time. My freelancer needs yeah. to film his face. He will film it separately. Then when he's done, he will also send it to the video editor. Then the video editor can maybe like need one or two days to edit this. So the overall flow is getting slower and I'm not comfortable with it. So, <laughs> I, told, <laughs> so I told my freelancer, okay, we now know we can do high quality. So we will only do like, 20% of the videos per month, high quality with videos yeah. that make sense. So for example, you're doing an in-depth tutorial that's 20 to 30 minutes long, where you would do affiliate links, that kind of stuff. We do face cam and video editing, but just for those five to eight minutes standard video, we'll do it back to the old way. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he can pump out like 60 a month again, because I was like getting a little bit uh, uncomfortable or like, yeah. I don't know, like, uh, I don't know. So because I saw yeah. the revenue not increase as much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the decision I've made. So it's like an 80-20 principle now in terms of like really good quality and a little bit less quality, but still good information, of course. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the goal. So uh, and 
maybe a funny update or interesting update. I will be experimenting with translating some videos to Spanish just to see how it goes because mm -hmm. the videos are already made. So the video is there. It just needs to be uh, translated with a voiceover. So yeah, I'm trying it now out as well. So I'll keep you guys updated and you updated as well on it. And of course, the community, because uh, we I've shared it already within, within our close community. I will be like sharing like everything in depth because many people also with Spanish videos, they wonder like, what's the RPM? Is it too low? Yeah. That yeah. kind of stuff. So I will just fully be transparent within our community. So you guys maybe can also see like, hey, is it interesting to do the same? Or just mm -hmm. stick with what you're already doing. So uh, that's it. I think it's I think it's a very interesting approach to start a brand new channel and do it as a case study. I was yep. actually thinking about that as well, and I think I might pull the trigger because I think I'm going to start a couple of new channels. Um, and one of the channels that I want to start is well, I'm still thinking about it, right? I don't want to be this big mouth who talks yeah. things and then doesn't do things, right? But I'm thinking about doing a new channel as a case study and fully just showing transparent 100% everything um, so you guys can follow, right? And people in the community can follow, follow it as yeah. well, just, just to the T as well. So that's kind of the, the cause you know, it's, I remember back from the e-com days when there were, you know, a new guy would come onto YouTube who would make videos about it, right? And then he would just show the full process from start to finish. That's what really got me excited yeah. because I was like, oh wow, he's not holding anything back. You know, so I think having that approach as well and spending a little bit of time, money and energy in it is is interesting. What you said about not feeling comfortable because the uploads have went down and yeah. your revenue kind of like, you know, just became it went up. Uh, but it, yeah, it went up like the monthly uh, revenue, like the monthly income yeah. will is like up two hundred dollars maybe compared to last month. OK, but still like. The previous four months, it was like six to seven hundred dollars, like bam, 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 and I'm like that. Okay, I want to yeah. keep that momentum, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 this fine balance between quality and quantity, you know. Yeah. Um, so my update on my end is uh, kind of a little bit messy all over the place, but we have main channel. Uh, I have, so I've been working really hard before I came to Spain. I've been making videos myself. I've hired freelancers. So there was a lot, like there's a big backlog of videos that were being published while I was in Spain. Okay. So those are the videos that you can, those are the videos that were published now. Right. However, like I talked in the previous, in the last episodes, uh, my RPM is not that high right now um, in comparison to what it was before. So what I want to do is I want to pause uploads onto my main channel because I've noticed that the videos are not ranking. Uh, the RPM is not that great. It's like, I'm just publishing, 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 right. And nothing is growing and it's just kind of very flat and not going anywhere. Right. And like you said, I don't like that as well. <laughs> so, you know, cause here I'm so used to the growth that I saw before. So I think I'm going to just give this channel some time, rest it out, not upload anything. Uh, just collect money, just let it run. Yeah. And then once the RPM gets fixed on my main channel, right? Or at least it improves, then I'm going to continue uploading again, right? So I think that's the plan with the main channel. Now, the good news is that my second channel got fixed. So my second channel got fixed. Uh, I saw the revenue just jump one day from like, it was uh, hovering at about three euros or three euro dollars per day. And then it just jumps to like 10 or 12, right? So three, four times higher. And now I think the, the RPM and the revenue is three times higher. So it's about 10 days, 10, $10 a day. So it went from like $100 to $300 just because, you know, the thing got YouTube. Fixed, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 just, be yeah. just because it's like that, right? Um, so that's exciting. What else? Um, yeah, affiliates are great. Right now it's the low season. Like I talked previously in, in the previous episode, it's the low season for the for many affiliates. Um, so we're going to see, I think, like the sales pick up again for the affiliates in man, this goddamn sun is killing yes. <laughs> uh, We're going to see a bit. We're going to see them picking up in January again. And yeah, December then is else? a slow month, I think, especially like the last week of December, last one and a half week, Christmas, New Year's, that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So because, you know, we get through the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, right? That's when all the advertisers spend all of their yeah. marketing budget that they have for the rest for the rest of the year. 
kind of make up the sales and then everyone just goes to Christmas holidays, you know, everyone just goes relaxing. So I think once we go to January, we're going to see us start picking up again. So that's kind of a little bit of the update. The money is good. Uh, revenue is fine. I mean, I don't complain. Business is, is doing pretty well, right? Yeah. Uh, like our community is doing really well. Yeah. Maybe we uh, let's talk a little bit also about the wins, right? Because like we saw that a lot of people listening and watching to this podcast have been joining our private community, our mentorship yes. program, right? So this is super cool. Really cool to if see. You, if you guys are still on the sideline and thinking whether you should like reach out to us, do it because the people who've been getting into the community is still pretty small. So this is the best time to get in and they've been getting wins. So we have um, our guy Julio from uh, Brazil. He actually got his channel and hired a freelancer and published his first video. And our motto with Ron is that if you can do it once, you can do it over and over and over again, right? So once you get to that first video, you've done pretty much all the hard work there is to do to take the leap of faith, to yeah. you know set it up, to get the channel, to get it all started, right? Hire people. And then once you have the momentum going, that's when you need to continue going at it, right? Momentum is a very powerful force in life and it yeah. can go two ways. It can go up or it can yeah, go or down. down. Yeah, know? but I agree. And, and by the way, Julio, I think he started three weeks ago or something or four yeah. weeks and when he started he no, knew nothing about youtube and it was his first online business venture as well he's working in his normal job and like three four weeks later he has a channel he's uploading videos yeah. so basically he's now in the game of making money online which is really exactly. good to see same with like another community member christina um she sent me like a list of her keywords and i did yeah. like the full uh like screening to find to help her out like these are yeah. good, good keywords to go for and she's also busy now publishing her first videos yeah uh, so that's really cool to see that people are slowly getting into the game and mm. especially people that have never started an online business before yeah. they, you just see them like publishing videos and indeed if they do one they can do multiple so i'm really yeah. curious what the community where it will stand like a couple months from now. Yeah. Because like now they're building up their, their video library, basically. Mm -hmm. A couple months from now, they will be like stacking up their videos and they will be compounding. Yeah. So yeah. then the earnings will uh, can increase pretty rapidly. So I'm really looking yeah. forward to that as well. And like we talked previously with you, you know, the importance of knowing and being able to generate money online, right? Yeah. It's very important. In today's day and age, a lot of us are working remotely, right? A lot of us are, um, you know, on the internet, like just check your screen time, check your screen time for the past seven days. iPhone gives me this notification once per week, like on a Sunday or something. It's yeah, like, same. Hey, your screen time is up by 56% on an yeah, average well of six hours per day. And I'm like, Whoa, relax. Where did all this time come from? So like you, like, do you want it or not? You spend a lot of time in front of your, um, in front of any screen. Right. Yeah. And you do realize how powerful the internet is like you're not jeff bezos who realized it in 1992 or wherever he started 99 right and 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 started this thing because he saw the growth right that's the story he saw oh the internet is growing by three thousand percent that's the story he told and that's why he was like if anything is growing that fast i better get into it right of course it's not growing that fast but the point is is that like a lot of things are online right like there's so many industries that got disrupted, right? Like think about Uber. This yeah, is a little yeah. bit unrelated. I agree. Like, you know, before you used to like, what's it called? Not is it is it a hail a cab? No, not hail a cab. Call a cab or like raise your uh, hand. Never right? basically, heard of it. But basically, you know, you you would just do it like this, or you would ask at the restaurant or wherever you are. Whatever you were, you would, you know, figure it out. Now it's yeah. like anywhere, anywhere you go in the world, you press one button and they will take you to wherever you need to go. Same with Airbnb and everything. It's just. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you can also see like remote work is also becoming more popular, of course, like because of the whole pandemic stuff and that kind of things like people getting used to remote work. But now like yeah. you can see people so slowly returning to the office more often as yeah. well. And like making money online has become easier and easier. And I think that's, it's a great opportunity to, to at least like, try it out like do something because it's so yeah. easy like like you said like there are so many tutorials on on youtube doing full case studies on almost any business and you can learn mm -hmm. like how you can look over the shoulder of someone that like knows everything and did everything and you can just try like it all takes the 
It's all about taking the first step. And yeah. that's the difficult thing. Like we saw also with our community, they watch the full course and it's like, whoa, I, I had so much information. What's yeah. the first step? And yeah. that's the same, of course, when you, you when you want to try, when you want to begin something online, mm. you start going onto YouTube, how to make money online. And you have so many business models, so you many ways to make money. It. Yeah. So then it's also pretty difficult. Like what's step number one? So I, I mm -hmm. understand why it's difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. But then I would say like, just pick something and just focus on that one thing. And even if you fail, it doesn't matter. You can always start something else. Like same with you. You did drop shipping, yeah. Amazon FBA, and you ended up in with doing YouTube search. Yeah. But you took that first step like seven years ago and eventually you'll end up somewhere successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, I speak to a lot of people on a daily basis nowadays. Right. And the one common pattern I see across many people is that like, they don't necessarily don't like their job. Like their job they say is fine, but they feel like they're made for more. They yeah. feel like, you know, there is more out for them there in the world, you know, like more things to explore, more things to go, like freedom to like, you know, experience it for themselves. And unfortunately, those things or fortunately, they, you, they require money, right? Yeah. Money is, is, is this amazing resource or this tool that allows you to do things, right? And money is this kind of transfer of energy. And, and so you need money in order to experience more to life than just what you have, right? Because it's fine. Like, oh, I have a nice house. I have a nice job and my partner and da-da-da, right? It's like a nice routine, right? But I know, like, I go on the internet and I see sometimes, you know, people traveling and doing, oh, how cool is that? And I also realize that, like, the internet is the place to be, right? It's like the digital era. So that's, I think, also how a lot of people discover, like, our podcast is they go on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or YouTube and they look for, you know, either a passive income or how to make money online or YouTube automation for that sake as well. And then they stumble upon us and then they start listening, right? So, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's, uh, but I, I wonder, like, why do some people like don't take the step you think? Like, apart <clears> from the, yeah, the, like the information is out there and it's a lot of information. Like because of what I think it's scary. What's also the case, yeah, the self doubt. It's and, scary. Yeah, and I, and I have a, like a quote. I got like the commonplace book. I sent it to you today. Like yeah. I had like I write sometimes these quotes in this book, and I yeah. had a nice one. Yeah. I hope I will say it correctly. But All the right. self image sets the boundaries of individual accomplishment accomplishments basically. Okay, can so, you explain that? Now, like the way you look at yourself, the way, like if you're convinced about yourself, what you can do, and if you, yeah. you limit yourself in the way of your thinking, like, yeah, I want to try this business model, but it probably doesn't work for me. Mm. Like you're basically limiting yourself. You're setting your own boundaries for future accomplishments yeah. that you can get. From and the start. From the start. And I think that yeah. self-image is basically where it all starts when you want to yeah. try making money online. It's like being convinced that, hey, Many, many people make money online through various business models. Yeah. Why couldn't you be one of them as well? Yeah, yeah. It's, I couldn't agree more with you. It's this like self-belief. Dude, I struggled with it so much. I struggled with it till now. You know, yeah. you come up with an idea, you, you, you discover something and you're like, yeah, I can do the same. And then the anxiety, the fear starts crippling in and like, oh no, they must know way more. They, they must know something I don't know. I'm just going to fail at like, it's a very real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah, but it, it's good to realize that like having those thoughts, it's fine, but yeah. it doesn't need to, it, it does not need to be the, the upper thought. Like it doesn't need to control your mind. Like it's fine to have mm. the thought. I think it's healthy because yeah. they just enter your mind. But how yeah. much attention are you going to give the thought? And if you just focus on doing the first step and then the next step, you also don't have time to, like if we just work, if, if, if for example, you say, I'm going to do drop shipping, you're going to look everything up from drop shipping and you just work, get all the information, start your first store, then you don't have the time to even self doubt, your, yeah. to doubt yourself because you're yeah. just working at it. And I feel like people are oftentimes like just waiting for the best moment out there to start. Yeah. And then those thoughts will get, yeah, yeah. Then those thoughts will enter your mind, and you have so much time to think about them, and you'll never start. And you just go yeah. to your job again. 
Yeah, I was reflect. I was actually reflecting, thinking about what we we're talking also today and days before, because you know I've I've been posting some um, some new content on my Instagram, right? If you guys uh, have been following or maybe you want to check it out, like I've been posting something that is really triggering, right? For yeah. people, we've been buying ads, like some a little bit more of the flashy things, like you know, oh, there's a nice car. For a reason, so, yeah, yeah, like. You know, I'm, I'm doing it for marketing reasons, right? Obviously, because it's just works subconsciously, right? Like, who doesn't like beautiful women and nice cars and vacations? Like, it's just like it or not, you're going to get triggered by it, right? So that's yeah. kind of the thinking behind it. But at the same time, right? Also, you're getting like negative comments, right? Yeah. You have maybe friends messaging you saying like, oh, love the new content with kind of like sarcastic yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like feel to it. And it's funny because it's not bothering me at all. Like you would think, oh my God, this guy is putting himself out there in front of all these people, right? And they're commenting and da, da, da. And I think to myself, like, you know, I go to bed, I put my head to the pillow and then, like, I'm like, I really don't care. But why why like, not do you think? Like, did you have this, the thought before? Like before we you started well, posting? Well, the reason I don't care right now is because the first time I've ever done that, like kind of showed my friends like, oh, I want to be a coach or, oh, I want to make social media content or like, you know, those things that kind of when your friends do it, you're like, mm, yeah, yeah, are you yeah. sure you're going to like succeed with that? You know, that's the first thing. And, and then they first make fun of you and then yeah, they yeah. get angry at you, like the whole kind of process, right? And then they eventually will ask you, bro, what did you do? Yeah, if it works, if it if it works out for you, they're going to ask you, like, I want to do the yeah. same. But they never want to go through that phase of shame and no, like, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's That's the thing. You need to do that if you want to get to the other side. You cannot get to the other side without getting uncomfortable. But that's the whole thing of social media right now. You only see the good side. Like the, yeah. the making money online and, oh, that's easy. I also want it. And then you dive deeper in what you all need to do. And people yeah. are like, ah, not for me. It's like, it's like I was recording some reels the other day, right? And I had some scripts. And so I took my camera. I went down to town. And I, I was like, okay, I want to just sit down, maybe get a coffee. So the first thing I had to do is I had to walk into a restaurant and ask, hey, it was like a nice restaurant. I was invited by the sea and I was like, hey, I would like to record some, um, I would like to get a coffee. But also you think I could just sit here in a corner and kind of record my, my videos like without disturbing anyone, right? So that's the first thing. And right away, you start to get attention. I don't know, this camera thing is like magical. For yeah, some reason, course, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, everyone starts acting weirdly. It's, I don't know In why. which way? Like, can I have an example? <sighs> Like people ask me, what's your Instagram? What's your YouTube? Like the, the one from the restaurants, right? And then really, oh, the, the people then, that work. And there. then people who yeah. like walk by, they're like kind of looking at you, like, oh, what are you doing? And then when we were shooting content at the thing on like the pier with with yeah. was it with you or with Hesla? I can't remember. They like some Swedish guys asked us, yeah, like, hey, something. like, what are you doing? Blah, blah blah. Where are you from? Whatever, right? So it's like, yeah. And then and then and then okay, that's the easy part. And then you have to make that content. Right? And then once it comes then, and anyway, so publish it for the whole world to see. Yeah. And that's when the thoughts start to enter your mind. Oh my God, what is that person gonna think? Oh, they're gonna make fun of me. Oh, blah, 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 like that, you know? But be, like, I'm saying this because this doesn't bother me at this point at all, because I've done it so many times before. The yeah. first time I did it was like with my, I think it was with my fitness thingy. That was the first time I really became like vulnerable, put myself out there on like social media and camera and everything. I was kind of, I was like, all right, I'm going to be a fitness influencer type thing. You know, I'm going to make, I'm going to help people get in best shape or, you know, gain muscle, yeah. lose weight, whatever. Right. But uh, yeah, um, over time you become incentivized to it, like in insensitive to it. So yeah. it's I like those it's things, age. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. The reps you put in. But I think it's yeah. all like I also posted my first Instagram post in like the past five years. <laughs> but like I now see the purpose, for example, for networking and that kind of stuff. Like yeah. if you want to talk to certain people nowadays, they will just check out your Instagram or your YouTube channel. Like it's it depends a business on what card. kind of yeah, it's a business card. So 
I was also like, first I was always like, ah, I don't like Instagram. I don't like to be flashy in people's face, asking for attention. But that was my first thought. But like after a couple of years, I switched the way how, how I'm looking at it. And I'm now seeing it more as an asset. How can yeah. I leverage Instagram to, for example, reach more people or, or expand my network, basically? Exactly. So, I, yeah. I see it as a business card. I see it as a funnel. I see it as a, a like... Yeah, like an asset you know it's 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 very important and and the people who say personal branding is very important that's yeah. number one and everyone has a personal brand and the people who say they don't care about social media that's their personal brand yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and it's also the, yeah. the, the funny thing is like people consume so much on social media so then it's yeah. also like normal to to contribute to it like i was having it I always had a thought in myself, like uh, not even so long ago, like maybe two years ago. Yeah. And I'm like film, make, posting a story on, on Instagram. And I'm like, yeah, I felt uncomfortable. Like yeah. people are watching this and I'm like, yeah, like I don't even want to post it. But then I'm looking at my own habits. When I look at someone's story on Instagram, I'm like, oh, funny swipe. And you don't even have a second you thought about think, it. You know, yeah. <laughs> but it's all in exactly. your head. But, it, yeah, it's, it's, but this is again the self-doubt basically. Mm -hmm. same with starting a business you have yeah. certain thoughts in your head and like they're not always the right way to think like especially mm -hmm. not if you want to reach a certain goal you need to yeah. reshape your mind a little bit and take the leap sometimes yeah you have to be online preferably have some kind of a personal brand right what are these steps to doing a personal brand first you need to identify your own strengths what are you good at what have you went through? A lot of people think first off, oh, I'm not good at anything, but that's not true because any challenge that you have overcame in your life, that is your strength, whether you couldn't study and then you had to learn how to study or you had, I don't know, ADHD or you, you know, your kid was misbehaving and you had to figure out a way how to, you know, get the kid to, to do something. So like all these things, like they take a lot of learning, right? So that's the first thing, right? Identifying strength. The second thing is, of course, identifying the target audience very clearly, right? Who is it that you want to communicate with and who is it that you want to add value to? Because the number one mistake people do is they think I'm going to help everyone or they have a super broad. Oh, I'm going to help, um, you know, I'm going to help young uh, women to overcome um, self-doubts. That's a bit yeah. too broad, in my opinion. It needs to be more specific. It needs to be like, no, women ages 18 to 25 who are struggling with this and also that. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it also then, takes time to find to to, yes. to to know that. And how to find your strength or your like a little bit of your purpose. I, I read it in a book. I don't know which one anymore, but it's like when people say to you, like, oh, that really comes natural to you if you do something yeah. like, I don't know, talk to a girl, for example. And if yeah. someone says to you, like, whoa, uh, how did you do that? And you're like, well, that came so natural to me. I didn't even second, like, th thought about it, that it was special. Yeah. Like, yeah. there are all elements, like, like with skill, there are all different skills that people, you, you that can be easy for you. But when other people look at it, they're like, how is he doing that? Or how is she yeah. doing that? And that's yeah. something you need to lean into. If you have something that people are saying to you, like, Whoa, yeah. that really comes natural to you. How do you do it? Then you know, like that's maybe something you could focus on because it comes yeah. very organic for you. you know? Another thing that I read from a book called Managing Wise Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker to find your strengths is something which is called the feedback analysis. So the feedback analysis is every time that you're about to make some kind of decision, write down what decision you're making and why you're doing it. Right. And then you look back at it. And then you realize like it's like just like journaling kind of like yeah. coming back to the journaling idea. But then you always come back and you feedback, feedback, feedback. Also talking about the whole, oh, you're so natural at this. Man, it triggers me so much. It's like so funny. Someone I was talking to someone the other day and I was kind of telling like what I do, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, man, you are natural at this entrepreneurship business thing. I'm like, fuck you. Dude. That's not true. Yeah. I'm like, how disrespectful. I'm yeah. like, I've been. I've been crying like when I went to bed for the past seven years, how hard it was. And now you're telling me just so I can get here. And now you're telling me that I'm natural. I'm the furthest thing from natural on this thing, you know? Yeah, that's I had a lot of times as well, like 
people are saying like, yeah, for you, it's easy because you don't have a nine to five job. And I'm yeah. like, dude, the reason I'm able to pay myself is because I put in so many hours and had so much doubt in myself. Yeah. But that's not what they see. Like they don't see when I'm here in a, in a dark room working by my little <laughs> I see. Yeah. yeah, but that's but it's also like not their fault because they don't know how it is to be yeah. to work for himself and yeah. so I don't I don't blame it. I think it's kind of funny because then yeah. it shows like they really have no clue what it takes to build a business. And then yeah, like like if you meet someone who is really good at something, don't assume that they're natural. Like there's even those like. You know, when you're walking on the streets and you see you see those people, like I find it the funniest profession ever. Uh, people who just freeze in one pose and then they stand there until someone throws them a coin and then they oh, yeah. dude, that's that's the worst job ever. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's that's even I'm worse worried. than a cashier, man. <laughs> Maybe they're listening to our podcast while they're uh, <laughs> like, you need to do something. How boring is that? What the fuck? Yeah. No, but even them, right? Even those people who do it really well, like imagine, imagine if you had to freeze a pose for like 10 minutes. Yeah, never. Your, everything would start shaking. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's a skill that they build up. It takes time. So everything, everything, whatever everything. you see people who are like professional, that's why it's so fascinating to, to, to watch like, you know, I don't, I don't watch sports, right? We kind of... I thought you were <laughs> Yeah, football is the best, yeah. bro. <laughs> but but like it's still fascinating to see people at the highest level. Like that's why Olympics are so cool. That's why all these different championships are so cool as well. Not for the fact that oh who is winning or whatever, but just seeing people perform at the highest like level possible. Yeah. You can see at that person, right? Whatever they're doing, you know triathlon or, or or cycling or whatever and you can just imagine like they are here because they've been practicing that thing probably since they're like five years old yeah very very consistently to a point where you would probably just throw in the towel and say i'm done but they kept yeah. going and that's why it's that's what distinguishes you know the champions from everyone from everyone yeah, and you else. watch like that the, if it's like a football player you watch that game like 90 minutes oh pretty cool move and you move on well that person no, no, like no, 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 no. No. the best the best one is give the ball to him he's open oh, my oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's true yeah that's when the they're best losing one. especially yeah yeah oh my god i could do better bro <laughs> yeah yeah with a beer in your hand yeah let's go. <laughs> perfect yeah that's true it like basically to summarize everything takes time and you just need yeah. to take the first step with, with anything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Like, just go for it. Like, it's as simple yeah. as it sounds. It's so cliche, but it's yeah. true. Yeah. I, sometimes I, th I think like, oh, we sound cliche. We sound like broken records. And, you know, I was thinking to myself when I was starting on my entrepreneurial journey that, you know, when I make it, I'm not going to be giving those cookie cutter, you know, basic advices that it's all about the mindset, you know, when because back then I remember very clearly when I was starting out, I was reading like, for example, Napoleon Hill, like get, um, get rich or die trying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what's, uh, uh, that's 50 cents. Think, yeah, think and grow, think and grow rich, rich, right? Right. Yeah, just sit but on was, your couch and think. I was, I was reading it. Right. And I knew that every, every, and I knew this, right. This is what I was thinking back then. If all of these entrepreneurs and business people are saying that this is one of the most fundamental books for success to get somewhere, right, then there must be something in it and I'm just not understanding it. But when I was reading it, it didn't make sense to me back then because I was like, what do you mean it all starts with the mind? Yeah, of course it starts with the mind. I mean, but it didn't click. It did, I didn't have, I didn't understand it emotionally, like spiritually, you know? And now, all these years later, all these actions, all these, uh, you know, failed and like uh, succeed, successful projects later on, now I'm starting to realize, okay, the quality and the clarity of your thoughts are going to determine everything, right? Because, for example, if you take someone like, you know, I don't know, let's say me and Jeff Bezos, right? And you give us the same... Hair. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and you give us the same objective, like this, like, okay, you need to build a, 
direct to consumer e-commerce brand and get it to a million dollars in sales within 12 months. Right. That's the deadline. Like I could probably do it with like funding and with like a good team and, and a good idea. Right. If I really had to like put my head against the wall. Right. But it would, I would go like this because of course I would be all over the place. I've never done that. Right. Jeff would probably be able to do it in like a month, maybe less a week or something. Right. Because he, his mind is much more trained. He has a lot more insight and knowledge into how it's done. And once you've walked the path, you can oh. walk back it. You know, like in the forest when you're walking on the snow and then you have the yeah, steps. Yeah, yeah. And then if you go back, you can see your steps and you can follow them. Same thing here. But if you don't have the steps, then you're just in the forest and you need to be like, okay, do I go there? Do I go there and there? And if you go the right, wrong direction, then you have to come back and try again. Come back and then on the third time, you're like, ah, okay, I had to go here. Yeah, you know? And that's that's why I think having a mentor is also very important because you're basically buying time. Like if you start something from, from scratch yourself, it can take indeed a year. And if yeah. you can have a mentor that can do it with you within one month, you're saving yourself 11 months. And that's yeah, the only basically. resource you have basically time that's limited and that's time. Yeah. So yeah, mentors also, I, I agree. But yeah, Jeff would, would definitely uh, destroy you, I think. With oh, 100%, bro. No questions asked. Within one day, bam, done. No, but that's what also Alex Hermosi says. You know, Alex Hermosi says, said that he didn't believe in the whole social media personal brand thing for a yeah, very long time, crazy. right? And then he was like, oh, personal brand. He went all in. And it, when he yeah. did, he paid Grant Cardone. I, I listened to this on a podcast with uh, Grant Cardone at the Iced Coffee Hour with, with Graham and Jack. When Alex Hermosi got into personal branding, he paid Grant Cardone $100,000 for 40 or 45 minutes of his time. Yeah. And you know what? That episode is live on YouTube on his channel. You can just watch it. Bam. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But he's also saying you need to... Oh, what is he saying here? I had it on my whiteboard, but I forgot. Mm -hmm. But like, basically, you need to invest as much as you can in yourself, learning new stuff. Yeah. Because if, 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 for example, you now have the knowledge to make 100k a year. Yeah. Each time you're not knowing how to make a million a year, you're losing oh, yeah. each year 900k because you don't oh, yeah. have the Pay, knowledge. You're paying ignorance the debt. debt. Yeah, ignorance, ignorance debt. debt. That that's yeah. the one. So basically, you need to find as much knowledge as possible to like pay your ignorance debt off. To get to your goals as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Ignorance that that's a good one. <clears throat> it's so fascinating to see how fast your perception of numbers changes and how fast your reality starts to change. Yeah. You know, like if you ask me right now, okay, how hard is it? Or like George, how hard is it to make five thousand dollars profit per month? I would say, bro, it's so easy. Yeah. It's so yeah. easy. It's just like, bam, right? It's it's. I can give you the step by step. Da 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 da. da. Easy. Yeah. Just just do these things, and I can guarantee in three months you're gonna be you're gonna be making five k on the lower end every single month, right? Yeah. And if you would have asked me this six months ago, one year ago, I would have been like, bro, it's so difficult. Right. I mean, that's now crazy. I'm, yeah. And now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking like, all right, you know, 10 K pretty easy per month. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Next I'm like, okay, hundred K. Ooh, that's, that's, that's. Yeah. But you more. basically can make the calculation. For example, if you make with YouTube, you make 5k now, you have X amount of videos online, you know, what kind yeah. of videos are paying for that amount of revenue. So mm -hmm. if you want to go 5K, you maybe need to double that amount of video just to like say it easily. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with uploading one video. You can upload a thousand. So once yeah. you know the process of making 5K or 10K, if you're having the right business model, you can also make 100K. Dude, this is so fascinating because when you combine YouTube search, when you combine searchable content with any niche, you can get into any niche. Yeah. You can build your personal brand in any niche. Then you can get into sales. Like it's so fascinating. Like if you guys are not leveraging searchable content on the most 
powerful platform on the internet called YouTube to drive traffic to whatever business you're in, you are missing out so much. Yeah. I there agree. has never been there has never been a better time to make more money than today. <laughs> I promise you. Yeah, and it's also like really easy because you can just hire someone to make the videos for you as well. Like you can eliminate yourself. Like I understand like when people want to start with YouTube, I understand like yeah, I don't want to film myself. Like I can get that. Yeah. But still like that's not even a barrier. Like you yeah. can outsource every step and the good thing is when you are getting search traffic, another door opens. Hey, do you know about affiliate marketing? <laughs> like, mm. and then you dive in affiliate marketing and hey, yeah. maybe sponsor deals. So when you're taking the first step or the first decision, more doors open and eventually you will go to the 10K, 50K, 100K. Pretty yeah, cool. like we, you and I have been talking about this is like, if you would have told us 100K per month revenue, right? A year ago, we would have been like, yeah, it's what, hard drug, to what, 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 what drugs are you taking, right? If you tell us 100K now, it doesn't seem so unreasonable anymore because we have a pretty clear plan like on how to get there, right? Why do we way, have the time? Time, yeah. knowledge, expertise, all of that. One thing I want to I wanna talk about, okay? There's a trend. You guys, if you're listening, watching, first of all, thank you. We really appreciate you. You're the best. Second of all, I want to give you a little bit of value. So... What has been on the rise? What has been what has been popping? Well, something which is called dopamine detox. You've probably heard about it. It's a big thing. Everyone is talking about it. Dopamine has been popularized. And people are like, oh my God, we are just being indulged into dopamine. We need to have a reset. We need to know how to do detoxes, right? We need to, and it's a whole thing, right? That's where all the monk mode comes from and all yeah. that. But in itself, that's a niche. If you think about it, if you search Google Trends and you search dopamine detox or, or, or even dopamine in itself, it's on a big trend. And it's like right now the most search it has ever been, right? And I, I sent you that. It was in the uh, newsletter from Google Trends. So this gives you an idea, right? And this is actually what I wrote down and I want and I maybe I'm going to try it. Maybe not. We will see. A separate chat. For those of you who wants to, for example, experiment, right? For those of you who want to be on camera, for example, you can also do it without camera. You can hire someone else to do the videos for you. Like it's no problem. You can do this faceless if you really want to. But for those of you who maybe have a little bit of more time and they want to try out some kind of a niche, I would suggest you try out the dopamine detox niche. First, collect all the different keywords there are to for it to collect how to detox how to cleanse how to reset just everything that people search when it comes to dopamine detox just look at it from all the different angles right make a little spreadsheet get like 30 keywords like good ones okay then either make the videos yourself or hire someone to make the videos for you okay focus on the quality of the script Okay, it needs to be informational. It needs to be actually well done because the people who are researching this are very much into like self-development. So they're, they're expecting something well and uh, invest well into like the whole kind of, um, it doesn't have to be fancy editing with animation. It just needs to be good enough, right? Good enough. And then there is a book on Amazon, which is called Dopamine Nation that we've read, you and I. Oh, is it that one? Uh, yeah. I forgot yeah. the name of the, yeah. it's not dopamine, dopamine nation. I think, I think it's... it is dopamine nation. Okay. It's called, the, really? I, I checked it. I checked it yesterday. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what you can do is you can either. So what you can do is you can make those 30 videos, one relate to the next. So think about how you can relate one video to the next, to the next, to the next. Right. So when they discover one video, they go to the next, 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 that will increase your average view duration time or session time. Sorry on YouTube. Yeah for the viewer, which in turn is going to boost the, the ranking of your videos higher up, right? Because the people who watch are going to stay on YouTube and that's how the whole thing works, right? YouTube is a business. They want to make money. They make money by getting people to watch their videos. And the more people stay on the platform and watch videos, those creators, people who make those videos are going to get rewarded the most, right? So that's number one, get them to watch as many review videos as possible. Number two is of course monetization, 
right? External monetization. So this is the question about how do you make money on YouTube without a monetized channel? And the way to do that is with something like this. And then in every video, you have one or two call to actions saying, hey, by the way, if you, uh, one of the best books that I've read about dopamine detox and, and the thing that you're interested in, dear viewer, is in this book called Dopamine Nation. Check it out. Like, uh, check it out on Amazon. I have a, a for your convenience. There's a link down in the description. Bam. Four and a half percent commission for physical books on Amazon. I think you're going to be making one to two dollars per sale for the book. But hey, if you I stack would up those videos, like yeah, find a on. dopamine detox course maybe from a guy. Contact him if the course is like, for example, two to three hundred dollars. Just say like, hey, I will bring you free traffic. You don't need to do yeah. anything. I yeah. want 30 percent. Then you get like a 100 yeah. order. Like that all, that's awesome. an option as well. Partnering yeah. up with someone who has a course, right? R r affiliate marketing, referring to, to yeah. him, getting a hundred dollar per sale. Great. Amazing idea. I had also an idea about ebook. You can make yeah. like a forty nine dollar ebook, which you can kind of put together pretty fast with chat GPT, for example. Right. But then I thought, like, why would I write an ebook when there's already a book and it's so much better? And yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah. then, but it, you can charge ways. more. You can basically charge more. That's if you're, it's your own product. You can get. And you can become a coach. Like you in the in a in a description box, you can even have people that book a call, let them pay uh, one hundred dollars per hour, if you're yeah. like fully into that, of course, or yeah. find someone that is into it and you can refer them to that person. Yeah. Like when you have traffic basically in a specific niche, you can do anything. You can make a lot of money. That's like the whole bottom line. And if there's one thing that I would encourage you, all of you guys listening and watching, please do a personal brand, right? You need to, you need to do YouTube and you need to do personal brand. You need to be an expert in something. That's how the world works. You're either a consumer and you're passive and you are, do not specialize in anything. You're kind of like a generalist or you say, okay, no, I want to actually specialize in something. I want to be better. I want to commit to the improvements. And with that, you know, there are always going to be people who are going to be one step uh, before me, you know, like you're yeah, always yeah. going to be one step ahead of you if you're developing. So the people who are one step before you, you can actually coach them. You can actually provide them some kind of value. And I think in today's day and age, knowing how to create, or, or, or get traffic from socials specifically with searchable content and then know how to monetize that and also attach an authority, like a the real person face-to-face -face thing. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. There has never been a better time. There has never been a time where, where, where it's easy to make money like that. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, True, but I do think <laughs> with a personal brand, it can take some time to build up your audience. And especially if you're not sure yet, like what kind of content you want to make, but like, it's very strong. If you have like, a, maybe you're working in a, in a IT, for example, you have a specific, you work nine to five now, you work in IT. Yeah. You, you probably have a very specialized uh, knowledge about a thing within IT mm -hmm. that other people also need or like something else. Like if you have a specific knowledge about something small, you can be, become like a, authority in that specific space and if this, that space is, is small then it's very easy to become a big authority in that space because you're one of the very few out there but what i often find is that people who for example they specialize in some very it thing at work they don't really want to turn that into like a personal brand because for a lot of the times they they don't have like a strong passion for it they just Oh yeah, they happen to be good. They train themselves to do that, but it's not like they would love to, you know, build their personal brand around no, that and like say it was an, it was an example. Yeah, what, I, yeah, yeah. what I mean more is like if you have specific knowledge about something because you yeah. do it in work or I don't know, you just like it. Make sure you pick like a deep, like a sub niche, because then it's very easy to become an authority and actually get traffic towards your page instead of like becoming the next vlogger. And talking about your daily life, like then it, yeah. there, it's very difficult to break through. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's it's and it comes down. The question comes down. The conversation comes down to value, right? You 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 should never start thinking about yourself first, okay? But that's a natural thing. Instead, 
always think about other people and how you can contribute and how you can add value to other people. If you shift your focus from thinking about how can I get for myself and you shift that towards how can I give, how can I serve, how can I provide value, that's when the doors start to open up. It's only through serving other people that you are going to, you know, get the transfer of energy towards you as well. You need to create the exchange of energy and you only, you can only start this fire if you first give. You cannot receive first. You, f- you give first and then you receive. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I also was, th- I'm just thinking like right now, just top of mind, yeah. like people that are still listening right now, like we're pretty <laughs> deep in like the 45, 48 We're minutes. deep, we're deep in it. Maybe we should give them something. Like if they DM you, we can give yeah. them a small, uh, small training. I have a good one. I have a good one. I've put together, if you're like, I have a, uh, so... I've put together recently a, a, a PDF with the principles of uh, basic principles of economic for keyword research success. Yeah. Okay. So and because, it's only shared inside a closed community, by the way, for now. Yes. It was but, only shared. I only shared it inside of a closed community. But because you're here and it's minute 51, right? <laughs> and you're deep in it with us. First and for your like, we want to say we really appreciate you. So for those few individuals, DM me on Instagram. Which keyword? Which <laughs> wait, what, should, what should they DM? What should they DM? Uh, not not too simple because we. Um, should we say like, PDF? Yeah, PDF is fine. Yeah. Okay, DM me the word PDF. PDF. Okay, on Instagram, then I will know. We will know that you are from yeah. the podcast, and I will send you this uh, this 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 PDF with the basic principles of economics for keyword research uh, success, right? It will basically give you the five most important principles from people from like, you know, Adam Smith, who studied, you know, supply and demand and, and all the other principles that are super important that you can apply, that you can study for keyword research and understand how you need to more think about it better, right? That's kind of the, 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 the thinking that we want to get there. So I like it. D, yeah, DM me PDF on Instagram and I'll send that over to you. All right. I think that's a good golden nugget to give away near the end. I think uh, we covered a lot Perfect. of stuff here. So, yes. yeah, let's wrap it up. Perfect. Ron, thank you so much for your time and energy. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, subscribing. And we will see you in the next week's episode. Ciao. Ciao. All right. <laughs> there will be a video editor right, in this podcast. I think it's a funny idea to give away 